Hello and welcome to the first ever Starry Sky News. This is going to be a new monthly series of videos that I'm going to put together that will go through any latest astro news, any new equipment that's come onto the market and potentially even some targets that you can image on any particular month. The series will evolve no doubt as I release more of these videos month on month but if you've got any ideas of topics to cover in a video then just put a comment down below. Now unless you've been hidden in a cave for the last couple of weeks then you'll have no doubt seen that the James Webb Space Telescope has produced its first images and that data is available to download for free. I have a video on my YouTube channel that explains how to do that and also a guide on my website. I will leave a link to those in the description down below. And once I get a chance I'll also release a video showing how to actually process the James Webb Space Telescope data yourself. Speaking of downloading data, if you're not already using a VPN then now is a great time to start using one. You know me as an astrophotographer but actually by day I'm a communications engineer specialising in networks and I have to say that using a VPN is one of the best ways that you can stay safe online and that's where the sponsor of today's video comes in, Atlas VPN. But what is a VPN? A VPN, Virtual Private Network, makes all of your internet traffic travel through an encrypted tunnel. This way it protects you from spying, public Wi-Fi dangers and hides your IP address and your online activities. Atlas VPN does this by connecting to one of their many servers all over the world, hiding your real location from undesirables. This also means that you can stream shows on the likes of Netflix that aren't available in your country. And you don't need to worry about Atlas VPN slowing down your internet connection because Atlas VPN has servers that are optimised for streaming. I've been using Atlas VPN for a few weeks now and I've had absolutely no problems in streaming 4K shows on Netflix, Disney+, Plus, etc. And the best thing is that you can protect yourself on unlimited devices either via the desktop app on a PC or Mac or via the mobile app. And right now, Atlas VPN is offering a huge discount. It means you can get a three-year subscription with a 30-day money-back guarantee for just $1.83 a month. Time is running out, so grab your deal by clicking the link in the description down below. Okay, next up we have Astronomy Photographer of the Year. Now, the shortlist for this competition was published just a few weeks ago at the beginning of July. If you're in the UK or happen to be visiting in the next few days, then the exhibition at the National Maritime Museum is open until the 7th of August, where you can check out all the amazing images. The shortlist for this was announced in July, and it's proof that if you have access to remote observatories that cost multiple thousands of pounds, then you too can make the shortlist for next year. Now, I don't say that to criticise anybody that's made the shortlist because the images on that shortlist are incredible and I'm not throwing any shade on people that use remote observatories. I've used them with Telescope Live. What I am saying, however, is that I think it's about time that the categories were looked at and perhaps changed to have either a professional category and an amateur category or perhaps different class of telescope because there's a huge difference between using a star tracker and a small telescope in your back garden versus a remote observatory that costs tens of thousands of pounds in the middle of the darkest skies in the world. But congratulations to everybody that did make the shortlist. The images are absolutely fantastic this year. I think they seem to get better year on year and I look forward to the competition next year where I will submit as usual knowing that I'm not going to get shortlisted because my images aren't that good. Okay last up in the news for this month Astro Dark has returned to some parts of the UK so at my latitude of 51 degrees north it returned around the sort of 21st of July. At the time of recording this I get about an hour by the time this video gets released it will probably be about two hours worth of Astro Dark and I am so excited that Astro Dark has returned. The difference that it makes to image quality even if you're using narrowband filters like the Optolong L Extreme or say a three nanometer hydrogen alpha filter it really makes a massive difference having proper Astro Dark. And of course, with the return of Astro Dark comes an endless amount of cloud, and we've actually had a lot of clear skies over the last couple of months when we haven't had any Astro Dark, so that's nice. All right, now we're gonna move on to new equipment, and there's a lot of things coming onto the market at the minute, but two things of particular interest for me is the ASCAR 130 PHQ Refractor Telescope and the Skywatcher Star Adventurer GTI. Let's start with the ASCAR. So the ASCAR 130 PHQ is the bigger sibling of the ASCAR 107 PHQ, which has proven to be quite a popular telescope. Aperture size is of course 130 mil, and it has a focal length of 1000 mil at f7.7. The price, 3,870 pounds. 
All right, not the cheapest of telescopes available on the market, but I think it's well worth a look. I will leave a link to it in the description down below so that you can check it out for yourself. I don't want to go into the stats too much on these videos, but if you want to join a heated discussion on cloudy nights about the theoretical capabilities of the Ascar 130PHQ, then I will also leave a link to that in the description down below. All right, the Skywatcher Star Adventurer GTI. I think there's quite a few people excited about this one, myself included. I have the version one of the Star Adventure, and I think is an absolutely cracking piece of kit. Retailers have started receiving GTI with first shipments expected by the time that this video goes live at the beginning of August. Now, if you haven't already ordered one, then you're probably gonna be in for a long wait to receive this. Pre-orders look like they might all be fulfilled in some of the first shipments. After that, there's still a component shortage going around, so next shipments are probably not due to arrive until early 2023. If you haven't heard of the Skywatcher Star Adventurer GTI and wondering what the hell I'm talking about, then this is the latest in the Star Adventurer range, version three, if you like. It now has a go-to capability, the first time that that's been seen in the Skywatcher Star Adventurer range. It will also track in declination, not just right ascension, which is also a first for the Star Adventurer range, but it's still the portable mount that it always was, which I think is absolutely fantastic for people that like to have a portable mount to get away from their local light pollution, or if they travel a lot, or if you're looking at something on the cheaper end of the spectrum, because this version of the Star Adventurer comes in at £515 for the mount only, or if you want to get the tripod and pillar with it as well, then it's £599. I will leave links to those in the description down below as well. All right, now moving on to things that you can target this month. I've not really given this any thought whatsoever, to be honest, but um, of course, now that we've got Astro Dark back in the UK, then the Milky Way under a new moon is a great thing to be shooting at this time of year. You've also got, let's have a think, uh, the North American Nebula, um, the Veil Nebula, and basically anything in the Seda region I would highly recommend. And I've actually released a video quite recently about astrophotography targets in the summer for the Northern Hemisphere, so I'll leave a link to that in the description down below as well. And that is it for the first edition of the Starry Sky News. Thank you so much to Atlas VPN for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to grab your discount code in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to do all of the usual YouTube-y things like like, comment, subscribe, share, etc. Do whatever you want. I will see you in the next video.